Welcome to Electro Online. Before we can learn how to divide matrices, there's some other things we have to learn first. Starting out, we need to learn what the identity mat matrix is. And so, what is the identity matrix? Well, there's some conditions that need to be met first for an identity matrix to be able to exist. First of all, the dimensions of an identity matrix is equal to n by n, which means it must have the same number of rows as it has number of columns. With other words, it must be a square matrix. Secondly, all the diagonal n entries from upper left to lower right must equal 1. So across the diagonal, they all must be 1s, and all the other entries in the in the matrix must equal to a zero. So therefore, by necessity, if we have a one by one matrix, an identity matrix, it looks like this. A two by two matrix looks like this. A three by three matrix looks like this and so forth. Obviously a four by four, four five by five, you'll see ones across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So there's some properties that we should know about identity matrices. For example, if I have any other matrix that has the same dimension as the identity matrix, we can multiply that matrix times the identity matrix, and that should be equal to the multiplication of the matrices in reverse order. So A times I must equal I times A, which by definition will equal to A. So if we multiply a matrix by an identity matrix of the same size, we will get back the original matrix, regardless of whether or not we put the identity matrix first or last in the multiplication. Normally, any two matrices multiplied together, when you reverse the order, you will get a different result. But in other words, it does not have the commutative property. You can't move them around and expect to get the same result. But with the identity matrix, that is indeed the case. You can put the identity, identity matrix last, or you can put it first in the multiplication, and you'll get the very same result. And we'll show that in just a moment. So let's say we have matrix A, which looks like this, and the identity matrix, a two by two identity matrix that looks like this. So let's multiply A times I and I times A. Quite often they don't put the, they don't put the multiplication sign in between and it's to be understood that those two matrices are multiplied. So using the multiplication rule, we're going to multiply the, all the elements in the row times all the elements in the column. We're going to do that four times, this row times this column, this row times this column, this row times this column, and this row times that column to get the four elements of the product. And let's see what we get. So with the first multiplication, we get three times one. So we move, multiply this times this, and then we move to the right on the horizontal here and vertically down along the row or on the column. So three times one, plus a negative one times zero. So that's three times one plus a negative one times zero. And I probably want to make that a little bit bigger so I don't run out of room. So I'll put it over here. So that's the first element. To get the second element, I'm going to multiply this row times this column. So that would be three times zero plus negative one times a one plus a negative one times a one. To get this element right here, we multiply this row times this column, so it would be 4 times 5 plus, so we move from left to right and from top to bottom, that would be 5, so 4 times 1, oh, let me do that again. So 4 times 1, that should be a 1 right here, 4 times 1 plus 5 times 0, good thing that I checked. And finally, this row times this column, so we get 4 times 0 plus 5 times 1. And then if we simplify that, so this goes to zero, so we get three. Here this goes to zero, so we get negative one. This goes to zero, so we get four. And this goes to zero, so we get five. And that should indeed be the A matrix. And so let's check. Three, negative one, four, five. And so indeed, that is correct. Should we get the same over here? Well, of course we should. So let's try it out. Leave plenty of room. So it would be one times three plus zero times four. Again, we move across on the rows and down on the column, so one times three and zero times four. Now we do the first row and second column, so one times the negative one, plus zero times five. For this element, we multiply this row times this column, so we get zero times three and one times four. And finally, this row times this column, so we get 0 times the negative 1 plus 1 times 5. And again, when we simplify, we get the following results. 
This goes to zero, so we get a three up there. That's zero, so we get a minus one. This is zero, so we get a four. And this is zero, so we get a five. And you can see we get the exact same result. It doesn't matter if we multiply a times i or i times a, we get the same result, which proves that when we multiply any matrix times the identity matrix, regardless of which order we put the identity matrix in, we get the same initial matrix back. And that's by definition the identity matrix. It's a matrix you can multiply with you can multiply the identity matrix with another matrix and you get the original matrix back and this is the conditions that we need to fulfill to have an identity matrix and you can see the different formats for different size identity matrices and now we know and understand what an identity matrix is and that's how it's done